hey and welcome or welcome back to my channel so my name is beth i'm a seamstress and freelance knitwear crochet designer um today i guess is just the start of like another vlog um so last night i finished my last project which if you've seen the last vlog is what i was making in that so it's the um drops flora uh cardigan with the drops kids don't wear hair i can't show you because it's currently blocking um but today i well i've just got back from work and need something new to work on i've got so much new yarn but i'm trying to refrain from casting on because i want to finish up a couple of whips that i've got going um so i'm kind of partially like part way through knitting a new summer top design it's going to be off the shoulder that was also featured in the last video if you saw it but we're not working on that <laughs> so i this project that i'm going to be hopefully finishing up i actually started um god like a year ago like no not that long but like last summer like last sort of august time um, it's in collaboration with Hobby, so I was sent their yarn to use uh, for this, but it's all like, this is completely designed by me and basically I need to get this finished making so that I can take photos and send the pattern to them because in all honesty, like this has been super delayed on my end. Um, just like things came up, I didn't have the time and I shouldn't really be <laughs> doing other things before I finish up with this. So it's basically a huge granny square blanket. Um, I did post some photos of this last year on my Instagram. So I don't know if you'll have seen that if you came from Instagram, but I will kind of show you, this is gonna be a struggle to hold up. I'll kind of show you where I'm at. <laughs> so like, <laughs> this thing is huge. Um, I've started seaming obviously some of it together um i need to finish i've got loads more squares to basically put on to all of this um and yeah it's all the squares are all crocheted it just needs attaching together and then it just needs a like white sort of border put around the outside so this is uh, crocheted using the Friends Extra Fine Merino. I also used this to make a cable knit jumper for them last year. And this stuff is super soft. It's really nice to work with. I actually held it double for this and the jumper that I made because this is quite a fine um, yarn. I think this is sort of like a fingering kind of way. Um, recommended needle size is like a three recommended crochet hook is like a four i think i held it double and i used a five millimeter crochet hook but it's just basically a huge patchwork grid of grids <laughs> this is so hard to show but um basically these are all um crocheted individually all these little green and blue squares and then seamed together you can see all the ends and then these bigger ones with the pink and red and then yeah it just alternates then it's going to be like a big mix and match grid essentially of all of these but literally like I said I just need to seam it and I just need to finish it and like weed the ends take nice photos I'm not expected to get this done like straight away but I think I can at least start to work towards um having it all seamed together because once I've done sort of the like hor I guess it goes like this way like the horizontal rows I just need to do the vertical rows and then yeah so I'm gonna start working on this this yarn is like so nice to work with as well because it is like super soft so there really is no excuse for me not to do this I just hate seaming basically that is the issue when you make granny squares is you then have to find a way to put them together which is like not my favorite like when I make garments now and like knit and stuff I always opt to do like a seam free sort of design so like picking up stitches in different places or you know not basically doing panels and putting them together and when I do granny square garments 
they are not anywhere near as big as this this is like huge this is like basically going to be the size of like a double bed um but yeah needs to get started on this so we'll obviously update you as you go along and probably work some more on my um summer top as well my knitted summer top which is knit in the sun Escan mandarin petite but this is priority and like i didn't even get to use it when it was like really cold because it wasn't finished so yeah it also like was kind of meant to like match my room obviously this green is like quite a bit lighter than the bed but um kind of matches like random bits of decor that i've got and yeah i just want to be able to um take this off now it's just taking space up still being a whip like it's in this huge tote bag so this is all basically just more granny squares and like just balls of yarn obviously the white is still in balls because i'm using that as the seaming and eventually like when i get to the border but i think i'll probably have left over anyway <laughs> so no yeah well i'll update you when i'm further in this hopefully get a better shot of what this actually looks like but the sun is going down so that might be a tomorrow job So me and my boyfriend went to the charity shops today and I didn't actually get any clothes. I actually donated loads, but I did pick up some fabric. So I just thought I'd sort of show you what I got. So I got this, which apparently is a tablecloth or I think this has actually been cut. Um, so I don't know, maybe this was too big for someone, but I thought <laughs> this fabric is kind of cool. I thought this might make like a cute kind of like summer top and then also this which I'm assuming is like a sort of tablecloth sort of thing as well I don't know really how well you can see this but it's sort of got these little like this kind of flower detail and then all over it's got these sort of little leafy flowers but I just thought these are so fun for the summer like could make something pretty cute with these so they need to go in the wash but i am excited to use them also today i have been teaching myself how to use dpns which oh my life why is this so stressful and so difficult <laughs> so basically my boyfriend's family um are from northern ireland and we're trying to go over and see them in July and he wants me to knit two pair of like sort of mitteny gloves for some of his relatives so I'm using the I think it's the Vienna set gloves from Petite Knit I've never ever used one of her patterns before but I just wanted to for these because of like the thumb shaping and stuff I've never made anything really small so like gloves socks in knit I have in crochet and like I know how they work sort of structurally but yeah so <laughs> i've been using these little wooden dpns these are on three millimeters and i don't think i've ever knit anything on three millimeters regardless let alone on dpns but we've successfully got about this far the tension in areas is questionable mainly where the sort of needles join you can kind of see here my stitches are a little bit but it's fine the actual bits from where the like needles are are pretty consistent it is just sort of where they join but i'm hoping like because i'll i'll block these so i'm sort of hoping that it will be all right once i block but it actually didn't take me as long as i thought to knit this much so i know i said i was trying to finish whips but this is going to be my cast on a need to ideally make two pairs of these <laughs> but i have also i did actually buy some sock yarn today so my 
local yarn shop has just had like a bit of like a revamp like refit and we went in and that's why i got dpn i've already taken the label off of this which is not great this is the opal yarn i don't know i've literally never heard of this before it's quite cool though because the wrapper comes with like a measuring tape on the back but yeah i'm gonna try and knit myself some basic red socks using the um summerly knitting sock knitting book so yeah these are some new bits that i've got which i really need to stop buying more yarn because i actually have so much spare yarn that i've got aside for projects but i thought i don't really have any sock yarn and i do want to learn how to make them so it's literally like one ball it's whatever and yeah i guess the, this is kind of like my guinea pig trial for the dpns i will say it's easier the more rows that i'm getting because these sort of stay in place better but the cast on and the first few rows were a bit dire i had to restart this many many times i've just been editing the last vlog and as i've been editing as like the footage is running just started knitting on the Onaling cardigan so i was actually swatching it for that in that i was swatching for this in that vlog so this doesn't actually look like much right now um obviously it's kind of curling because it's stuck in it this is basically gonna be the back panel i'm gonna do like a drop shoulder um cardigan design so i'm basically gonna knit down from the back and then pick up and come forward for the front knit down connect to the arms etc etc if you know sort of knit constructions then that probably makes sense and if it doesn't i'll be updating anyway but my bed is like a mess right now. There's yarn everywhere. I actually did clean up this morning, but I need to put away this stuff because I had to move, I had to dig things out of my wardrobe to get to this yarn. But I yesterday donated like a load of clothes and some books to the charity shops because I, I bought quite a lot of like knitting and sewing books recently. And I just don't have enough space for them. They're currently down on the floor by my sewing machine which I'll show you, but I've made a bit of a gap on my bookshelf. I don't know if you can be able to see, uh, like here. So I'm gonna try and move things around. I don't know whether to, hang on, let me show you the other side, I guess. So I have these shelves up here and I don't know whether to move my hardback uh, books to the shelf next to my bed here or to just put my knitting book straight there so i'm gonna have a bit of like a sort out a bit of a tidy up because honestly my hands are killing me which has just reminded me the reason why my hands are killing me is because <laughs> i've been learning how to use dpns i don't know if i've already done a clip of this so sorry if i'm like repeating myself but saying this now i feel like i've said it before so i'm not gonna repeat myself but this is how far i am so <laughs> I wiggle this onto my hand I've basically done the thumb increases I don't know if you can actually even see um and I'm essentially just before the row that you need to split for you need to take off the stitches for the thumb and like continue to knit the rest of the like mitten bit but these are really, or these are three millimetres and they've really, this hand has like, is really starting to like cramp up now. And um, obviously knitting on just this like flat bit of stockinette. The knit rows are fine, it's the pearl rows that are killing me. And I need to give my hand like a rest. So I'm gonna try and get on with some other bits that... <laughs> not gonna give me a wrist cramp so yeah gonna try and sort my books out um maybe check back in at some point and i've there are some bits i'd really like to pattern cut um so maybe i'll start on that i'm not sure because it's it's half six now in the evening so i don't want to set myself up to try and do loads of things and it's just like it's getting a bit late but potentially um maybe start on something like that if I have the time.
Please excuse my hair and general appearance. It's definitely a hair wash day today, but I've just gotten up and started cleaning my room. And basically, as I've been sorting through my yarn, I've like dragged out all my boxes and found loads of old whips. So I thought I could like basically show the whips that I've had for ages that just haven't finished. This being one of them. All of this behind me is like just bags of yarn basically that I'm trying to put away and yeah I have just found random bits in that I like forgot ever even existed. <laughs> so this is a jumper that I started making last summer and this is using the Drops Muscat um, cotton. They just look like this and it's, it's literally just like a really simple raglan with these garter stitch um, like rows of like the primary colour in this like repeat pattern and I kind of like the design of this like try and get like close up I like how these bits sort of stick out it, like I don't know if you can see like gives it some kind of texture and like the white that like peeks through so I've like literally already like finished the whole body of this and I just need to do the sleeves however I think the reason I stopped doing this is because I'm like am I actually ever gonna wear this like is this actually my like style I guess um I don't know if you like it's literally it's just the same on the back like it's just a raglan and then the sleeves are gonna be like the same <laughs> I'm kind of trying to like put my arms back to like imagine that it's um kind of done because I'm like do I really want to like necessarily finish this if I'm not sure if I'm like actually gonna wear it um but then at the same time I'm like I'm so close and because I've like cut the strands for like all of um like the colour work well and I think I think I continued using the yarn for the white and then just like cut and attach new bits for the colours I like literally can't even remember um but yeah I'm like how will I reuse this yarn as another project because there's really not like enough length of any of the pieces now so yeah this is number one that I'm like I don't know what to do with this I don't know whether to finish it or not I will say I actually do like wearing this yarn um I'm currently working on a couple of other pieces in cotton and there is another whip as well that's in cotton that I think I'm gonna unravel that and remake something with it but I think at the time I had decided I was gonna do that anyway so yeah this is number one I don't know I won't be doing anything with it straight away so maybe someone that w that's watching this will have some kind of opinion on what I um if I should finish this or not but yeah like the idea just maybe kind of wish that I had done this in different colors also like this is like a bright bright like paper white sort of thing and I think I have discovered about myself that I like a very slight off-white like I don't know how well you, the like picture of my or like the wall color is coming up but like my room's like an ivory it's not like a exact white and I quite like that with like a bit of like a warm tin I don't know I just feel like yeah I don't know would I wear this does this really fit with my style anymore but this is the thing I'm trying not to make things that I don't actually think I'll wear because they just sit in bags and boxes like I have so many crochet pieces that are just sat around which actually I might show you another one quickly <laughs> So this is a crochet piece that I made last summer and I actually made like a whole video on like how I was making this. Also, please excuse, I picked my pinky finger off last night. Um, but yeah, I made like a whole video showing how I made this from start to finish and then didn't post it because I decided I didn't like the final outcome. Um, I think the main thing with this is firstly, the cuffs are so tight. So I actually knitted the neckline, which I actually also haven't obviously weaved in the end, you can see here. 
I actually really like this knitted um, neckline, but yeah, these cuffs, I like can barely get my hands through. And also because it's balloon sleeve, you like can't wear it under any jacket. So like when it gets cold and you need to wear a coat, I actually can't wear this because like I can't get these sleeves like in anything. But like now that I'm trying it on, I'm like, do I just remake the sleeves? like? Because there are no decreases in these until the cuffs, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I'm like, if I maybe like remade this or like just redid the sleeves tighter, I actually don't dislike like the overall actual like stitch and design. So this is like a um, houndstooth crochet like houndstooth design and like every other row is white and then every other row in between is like this gradient I think the other thing as well is like when I step back this looks way more striped and I wanted it to look more like like a gradient I don't know if it's just because it's on camera or like if it does look like this in real life but yeah this is really warm because this is 100% wool but again because every stripe is a cut piece what would I reuse this yarn for? Because nothing is like in a ball anymore. I actually only remembered about this because I've just found the scraps that I had from when I made this. And you know, there's like nothing of significance that I could actually make. So yeah, obviously this isn't something that I'll be fixing anytime soon, but like things like this, I'm like, what am I gonna do with this now? Um, but yeah, don't like necessarily dislike the whole idea and the whole thing. Um, quite like, like the drop shoulder. I think it's like baggy enough on me, but yeah, I think ultimately it's the sleeves that are giving me issues. And like, this is obviously quite a like statement <laughs> kind of colorway. Um, so yeah, I don't know. If, if anyone is watching this, you will have to give me your thoughts because I literally have no idea what to do with them. But yeah, there are some more pieces, so I guess we'll just get into them. So this is crocheted as well. It's in this like bright red cotton from Derham Wars. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure um, this is what they look like. I think this was from Lovecraft. They were having a sale last summer and yeah bought some yarn this is what i got to before i ran out um ordered more and then had decided i did not like the fit of this so i don't actually hate the idea of this piece it's just yeah it's too big so i basically wanted like it's basically like a double crochet chain it's sort of like this grid like all over i just wanted like a oversized not oversized but like a like kind of holy like summer jumper like something that i can wear like to the beach the bikini cover up this is a crocheted raglan as well and yeah like i said i actually don't hate the idea i think i just i wasn't a fan of the sleeves i think i wanted something that was tighter fitted which i don't know why i said i wanted this oversized it is oversized and that's not what i wanted so I think this was just a case of I had to wait for more yarn to come and then I couldn't be bothered to unravel it and like start again essentially but this is maybe something that I will like revisit because like crochet obviously works up quite quick anyway and now it is the summer like this is really like breathable like I like the red so yeah shame that I didn't sort this out last year and then the back's literally just the same <laughs> but yeah i think these sleeves are just too big i think it's because i did it in this where this kind of like gridded like i didn't want to put in like decreased points i guess under the sleeves and where it's the raglan i just went straight from here but i could probably like unravel this take back some of the yoke put this in tighter and then make it more of like a top but well, not like a top but like a tighter fitted thing just by making this yoke shorter yeah it wouldn't be hard to do 
I just haven't done it and I forgot I had it <laughs> which is the case for most things this one I actually have shown I showed this pretty recently um I think in my uh, like summer knitting plans and then maybe in a vlog or something I'm not entirely sure this one I already know I'm gonna unravel so I don't even know if you can see it's like this cable knit design but you can't see it and I've already taken the needles out um so this is just slowly like unraveling at this point but yeah this is dropped flora I'm gonna make this into something else for sure so there is no question about this one which is good um this is actually pretty soft I'm holding it with like a random strand of some really fine like boucle I don't even know where it's from it's just a random cone that I got from uni <sighs> so yeah this I'm just gonna make a plain jumper out of because the boucle means that there's like really not that much sti like stitch definition but I think you just can't go wrong with like a charcoal grey like plain I uh, like plain jumper so I already know I'm unraveling this so this for sure yarn is a key I think that's it for like the dead whips that I've found <laughs> but I have just found like random like quantities of yarn like so this for example this is the friends extra fine merino I had originally ordered this for the blanket that I showed in like what I was doing last night, like finishing it off. I had ordered this as the pink originally to go with the red, but they were too similar in tone. So I emailed Hobby um, and they really nicely sent me the lighter pink and just like didn't ask me to send this back. So I have like, I don't know, maybe like eight, eight of these and I don't know what to do with them um this is like again like a fingering like a four ply sort of thing um i typically hold these double but i also made my cables jumper in this last year and the yarn grows massively i guess i can show you that as well while we're here again i've not weaved in the ends on this <laughs> but this is knit using that yarn and this got massive when i washed it so this was a jumper that I was designing for Hobby and this yarn is really nice to wear apart from the fact that this is now massive like I don't even think you can see the bottom of it like it just absolutely drowns me <laughs> um you know I was really proud of this like the size of it when I like knitted it and it wasn't washed was fine like fine it, it was really good I was really happy with it like really happy with the cables I feel like these are like really pretty with all the little eyelets and stuff and this was using that yarn in white with a pink mohair um so it's this really sort of like light kind of pinky color I need to finish this <laughs> desperately I think the problem that I had was so I I was gonna make this and this was gonna be like either the small or the medium as a sample however like I think when I first made it like the sleeves sort of came well normal sleeve length so like here obviously this was shorter my god you can see how much fabric I'm like holding up this wasn't so wide and obviously it grew and I then was kind of stuck thinking do I make this the larger size I couldn't well I probably could but because I knit this bottom up it wasn't just as easy as like undoing the bind off because this is the cast on the sleeves I could take back I think at the time honestly I was just so annoyed that I didn't even want to um but even if I made it shorter it still doesn't really fix like the width so yeah, I really need to finish writing up this pattern for them. But now I've got that other yarn, I'm like, I don't know what to do with that because that's not enough for like a garment quantity. And obviously the colour wasn't exactly what I was expecting off of the website. So that's not great either. But yeah, with this, like the yarn's actually super nice. And like, I don't want people to think that I'm like hating on this yarn because it's actually really soft. It's really nice. 
by a super wash and I had never worked with super wash before I made that and I actually did do a gauge swatch and I washed it and I blocked it and I did my measurements accordingly it still just got massive and it's I probably wouldn't um by choice use like a super wash again it's something I stay clear of now because I spent so many hours designing and making that and I literally can't wear it now <laughs> so yeah I did see I think at the time like um Jamie Creates made like um a jumper using super wash and then she put it in the washing machine and the, the, the tumble dryer and then it actually did shrink a little bit and I was going to try that but then I posted a video at the time and I had people say to me like it's not going to shrink so I just like didn't even bother but now <laughs> what do I do with all of this I don't know it's like it's all nice like relatively expensive not like massively expensive but like things for me that I you know saved up from bought and like I don't want to waste the yarn but I have like no projects in mind and it's all just taking up space and like I've got new yarn coming in but I've also discovered I'm like horrible at estimating yarn so like for example the drops daisy jumper I made recently the ribbed one I have this much left over granted I didn't make it as long as I thought I was going to but even still I've got one two three four five five of the daisy and like three of the mohair and then same with the drops flora cardigan I've just made I ordered 12 balls so I was holding it double and then I only used I think I used like seven and a half so and like same with the mohair so I've kind of got like this little collection of leftover mohairs going on but like things like this like this is ridiculous but I think my problem is because I crochet before I knit I go off of my like crochet yarn estimate like length estimates and obviously knit uses way less and I do buy less but or I obviously need to buy significantly less so this is something that I'm trying to track now is like how many balls of yarn I'm actually using in different yarn weight groups so that I stop buying loads of excess because not only is it expensive but secondly I end up with random amounts like in all honesty this is probably enough to do something else with so like, I'm not too bothered about this but like you know having like random things sitting around they're not getting used but like also I don't know what to make with them I potentially could make like slipovers and stuff but I don't ever like I don't own any like they're not part of my normal day-to-day -day wardrobe so I feel like making them is that just like again a waste of the yarn could make accessories like scarves will still have excess left over <laughs> so yeah I'm having a bit of a crisis to be honest I also have loads of cones for my knitting machines but I'm not even gonna get into that right now so struggling could also put them together and make something but then the issue with that is if I use different fibers they'll all block differently so like I wouldn't want to mix the friends superwash the extra fine merino superwash with like one of my drops yarns like wool because that bit will grow and the other bits won't grow so these are all struggles <laughs> that I'm having currently so as you can see this is where my knit books currently are apart from the ones that are up on display on my wall um there's also these two new ones that I've got this is obviously my industrial sewing machine there's like random dvds random sketchbooks my knitting machine um like manuals and stuff so I just want to get this like off the floor and just like sort this area out because it's just not organized like whatsoever. So it's a bit late now but I'm finally getting to sorting these out. So I've kind of split them into piles. <laughs> so basically these are like the manuals for well firstly my domestic sewing machine um, and then these are all of my knitting machine sort of manuals um so i'm not too worried about them staying with the rest of this stuff i'm gonna leave a couple bits down here also it's like loki ruined my carpet well not ruined my carpet but the <laughs> the indents there are just from the books but i'm not too worried about them staying there it's these bits so 
these are a lot of these i got second hand um these rowan pattern books i actually got from a charity shop um so obviously i want them to stay together this one i bought years ago have i knit anything from any of these no i like to have them as references for stitches and construction stuff these are the chunky ones so again this this and this got them all second hand um obviously these aren't all knitting that obviously there are some sewing ones and stuff um i have this huge um vivian westwood book which my boyfriend found and gave to me actually um and then some that's a book of stitches again that was second hand from a charity shop and then these smaller ones so really i want these to stay together the problem that i've got is that i'm actually not sure that my shelves are going to be wide enough to fit them and not only that but like these books are pretty hefty i mean this vivian westwood one is very heavy and i don't, i almost don't want to put them all together in one place because i'm worried that it's gonna fall off but saying that i do already have hardbacks up there and hardbacks there so i'm not really sure maybe if i can sorry about that camera angle maybe if i can split them maybe into some sewing some knitting and then put them away maybe it'll be easier i also then have these little books um this when my uni library was closing my friend just uh, picked it up and gave it to me that's obviously a drawing book and then that one over there um the knit for absolute beginners i actually think i'm just going to donate it this bag here of the hobby craft one is just yarn i'm going to donate and some of my friends are learning how to knit and that so i might just honestly see like with them too if someone else wants them if i can't fit them anywhere because i don't use them i don't need a beginner's knitting book these are all more like specific things but then at the same time like these two are um machine knitting books so i don't know if i should keep them with the machine knitting and yeah i'm just gonna try and have a bit of a like wiggle around see where we end up putting things and yeah i also have these um so that vogue fashion knitting book i i got that second hand that's just a little book that i got from tk maxx um some art prints this thing on the side so my fingers like not in focus but this my dad actually got me when he was in china it was it's like finger painted it's like a little waterfall thing this magazine i think it's like a student run thing or it's like a small like independent thing but my uni's graduate fashion week got put in there so my garments are actually in there um obviously this is just a crochet book and then 52 weeks of socks so i'm not going to move any of that around because i quite look, like how that looks aesthetically so i do actually have those up a few bits as well but i will not be um moving them i've gone a bit sidetracked because i've started flicking through these books i've never properly looked through this before which is pretty bad um but this is so pretty and i'm literally just flicking through um this is the book the thing is though i find with old patterns and same with this one it's rowan yarn and uh, rowan yarn is so expensive and i've literally just bought some in sale but like i know you can find like an uh alternative but yeah this is very nice so this is what i've ended up with sorry if this is actually of no interest um but oh well so I have managed to fit most of them here. There's just two that haven't fit, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, this is sort of how it's looking on the bookshelf. The only thing I'm worried about is that this shelf has a lot of weight on it. Um, that lamp is pretty hefty. That was from TK Maxx, but it's actually Ralph Lauren, but I obviously did not pay full price. Um, and then obviously these normal books, but yeah, the the big ones are what i'm worried about but we're gonna leave it there because my thought process is i knit in bed all the time it's the only place in it is unless i'm sat at my desk knitting something like in particular but when i'm mainly knitting i'm mainly knitting sat right here so i think this will be good to have literally on hand to just um sort of reference things but yeah i hope this isn't like super boring <laughs> 
so this is how I've managed to get it down down here. I actually didn't have to move any of those books, which is nice. The only thing is I have this one, which is annoying because it's short but wide and I can't fit it in anywhere. <laughs> Um, but I've been flicking through it and it's actually really helpful. So I don't want to get rid of this. I mean, it's predominantly sewing. So this tiny section here is really all the knitting that there is. But this is like a basically like a sewing Bible. So I don't want to get rid of it. I think for now I'll just slot it in there. I have to put these DVDs back down there anyway because they're my dad's I need to give them back to him so I think just for now we're just gonna put that there or maybe just like slot it under so you can't see it but um yeah it's fine it cleared like this bit this was more the issue because it was starting to like stick out but I don't mind that bit in there they're just like notebooks sketchbooks pattern master all that good stuff so I have a bit of an update on the Onling design that I'm making. So I started knitting on this um, literally last night and I've basically done like one half of the neckline. So this again is knitting the Onling number one. I'm using a four millimeter needle holding it single. This is like, this is a DK weight but I tried swatching bigger and I had to go with a four. Like, I don't know, I think because of the fluff, like maybe it comes up a bit bigger, but I find that the actual yarn is quite like fine, but then also maybe that's just me because I'm not used to knitting on yarns this fine. I, I don't think I've knit anything below like a five or like a 4.5, so anyway. But this is kind of what I'm doing. So this bit at the top is like the back. And then I picked up stitches here and I'm basically doing the neckline. So I sort of put this on so you can see. Also, sorry, excuse the stains. It's from when I dye my hair. Um, but yeah, so like that bit's kind of flat along the back neck. And then this is how the neckline is turning out. So this is actually gonna be um, a cardigan. So I feel like this side looks a bit small, but obviously it's gonna have armhole shaping. So it's gonna come down and then kind of go back out here. And I was worried like that this wasn't gonna work out, but actually like, I do quite like the, lo like the look of this neckline because even though it looks quite wide, obviously when you put like the ribbing on, you can really just make it as tight as you want at that point anyway. And I quite like the look of like a uh, like longer ribbing that kind of comes like round and up the neck. So I don't even think I'm going to be able to. <laughs> it's so curly because it's stuck in it. But this fabric that this knits up is the softest thing ever ever like this is so luxe I actually can't even like rave about this um enough so yeah been a bit distracted with this one I haven't knit any more on the um on the mittens but like they're only little and I knit that up so quick so I basically wanted to knit one half of the neck to figure out the pattern before I did the other side I'll show you my like um sort of crazy rambly drawings um so this is kind of how I planned the neck not that you can really tell what this is but after like from the gauge swatch and because I started obviously on the back I sort of worked out the measurements for how much I for how big I wanted the neckline sort of from here to like the same on the back and then sort of worked out how, how far in I wanted it like the curve and stuff and <laughs> this is what I've been following so because I've literally been like trying to do the maths and then go from there obviously I'm not like following an existing pattern or anything you just never know um if things are like actually gonna work out or not but Fingers crossed, so far it seems so good. The next hurdle that I'm going to reach once I've done this side is 
the armhole shaping and like how far down to start but before I do any of that I need to redo my thumbnail because I somehow pinged this off at work like these are like gel X extensions like they're stuck on with uv glue it's not they're not just stuck on with like nail glue and I've never ever had an issue but I feel like I caught it at the exact right angle on the overlocker to it literally just like twanged off like it didn't even hurt but that's like so not the point but it um it needs redoing I actually do have the nail like I could just stick it back on with nail glue but I just know it'll keep coming off like every couple of days because obviously like the nail glue is not as secure yeah probably don't care I'll update more with the cardigan when I get so this is just a bit of an update with um the only cardigan that I'm designing so I've been knitting on this for like I want to say like four three or four days now but like only in the evenings um so I started on this is my cast on edge knitted down then knitted sort of up and did the neckline just to make sure that that fit and now I've basically knit these longer to where basically this is going to sit under my arms so I have put in some armhole shaping sort of on these sections um i am still gonna cast on some stitches under the arms just to make it a bit wider because i do want the body to be a bit bigger than this but this fabric that this knits up is just the softest thing ever i feel like this isn't picking up very well on camera because my bed sheets are white but it's like a really really nice kind of creamy color really happy with this um neckline shaping that i did um this does feel like it's taken a bit longer because i've never actually knit anything completely in four millimeter needles like you can kind of see i guess the thickness of the yarn here so this is technically like a dk um weight but yeah this this definitely feels longer for me because i don't normally knit this small but overall really enjoying it just because this fabric is so nice it's really really nice to knit up and work with and i'm really excited to start seeing this piece come together because once i've knitted the garment i then get to do the crochet the surface crochet floral designs that i want to do all over it so i guess this is kind of um working as like a bit of a blank canvas for me at this point um obviously gonna have because this is a cardigan gonna have like the ribbing and like the neckline added on so this is sort of very very early stages but pretty proud of all of my maths and measurements that I had to do to make this here's like another view of it at the minute um obviously it's kind of difficult because it's everything's curling at this stage um but this is sort of where it all sits obviously the front neckline is lower than the back i don't actually think it's this lower but it's kind of hard to line up so just a small update on this so i don't think i had connected the body pieces in the last clip but i've basically after obviously making everything level i've cast on some stitches under the arm and yeah connected the front and the back pieces now i'm finding this kind of hard to judge right now but size wise i think fine um i definitely wanted the body to have a more sort of oversized fit compared to the shoulders so this bit kind of goes out and then it casts on more stitches under the arm. You can kind of see like the shaping here, which I think has worked quite well because this body is definitely like, yeah, body width is fine. The only thing I'm worried about is that these armholes <laughs> are so low. And what I'm thinking is when I cast on for the sleeves, that maybe because I tend to cast on at a rate of like, every three like rows I pick up two, like only two stitches so like pick up two miss one pick up two whatever so I'm thinking 
I can potentially, it will cinch it in a little bit anyway, um, and that it won't sort of hang this low because where I'm only to here, I kind of think it's a bit hard to judge. So yeah, I am sort of hoping that that will get a bit smaller. So I'm literally about to like leave the house, but I think when I get back to knitting this, I've not got, I have this much left of the current ball that I'm using. I think I'll at least get another round in. So I think I'm gonna just keep going with the body until this runs out. And then I'm gonna try and pick up some sleeves and try and basically gauge if these sleeve holes are too long or not because if this is if these sleeve holes are too big like i'm gonna be pretty pretty upset because this is so much knitting like i've never knit anything this fine before i think you can kind of see the fabric a bit better now that it's on me but this is knit in four millimeter needles so this has been a bit of a stretch also the fluff comes off on everything i don't know how well you can even see that but yeah i really am like just do not want to frog but if i have to then like obviously i will um yeah i think this is just sort of throwing me off because i the last few things i've designed have been raglans and so they're obviously like constructed differently and i kind of know where i'm at with that but obviously doing this sort of drop shoulder design like ugh, looking at this these are huge but we're gonna cast on sleeves and see this top bit though the actual like shape of this top neck and stuff i'm actually really happy with so like this basically is going to come out to here and then obviously i'm going to pick up stitches for the ribbing and i wanted a pretty thick like collar um i probably might even do like folded over so i'm not too bothered that this is looking a little bit wide and obviously we'll have a button band down the front but yeah it's just the length of these arm holes i think if it comes to having to frog this i will be a little bit more inclined to cast something else on on bigger needles for the time being because knitting this small actually is making my hands cramp a little bit not as bad as the gloves that i've been knitting which i guess i can quickly show you as well sorry if this light is bad um the sun keeps going in and out I think I said these are one of the petite knit. It's like a fingerless glove with like a little thumb. Um, really close to casting off the actual length. And then I just need to basically do the thumb hole. But I was I switched from this, kind of like this, to the cardigan because these were making my hands hurt. And now this is starting to make my hands hurt. And I think, yeah, just the pain of frogging, I would sort of want to cast something else on bigger just for the meantime just so that my hands aren't going between two such fine projects especially if i have to re-knit all of this um these rounds are obviously getting quite long knit rounds and pearl rounds so fingers crossed for me that this works out it's just yeah these i don't know it's so hard to tell um without obviously putting actual sleeves into them so yeah, anyway, I'm just rambling now, but that is the plan. So like I said, I've basically started knitting on the sleeve to try and work out if these armholes are too big. And I've started decreasing. I'm decreasing sort of evenly spaced. And I still can't tell. Like, I can't tell if this is going to be too wide or not. I think maybe it will be okay. It will obviously be a bit um, oversized, but I just, I'm like really stuck now because I'm like, I don't want to continue and then be like, oh, this is too big. But also I don't want to like rip back for no reason because this is knit in four millimeters. Like you can probably see this is quite fine. Um, it's a lot of hours of work to like, just have to rip back and then be like, oh, I don't feel like I needed to do that. So <laughs> I'm now stuck again. I might um, put a poll on my Instagram to see <laughs> what people think, but I'm kind of trying to hold this in place because this is where well, like the neck will be, but I want to have, obviously there's going to be like ribbing. So like this will kind of come up a little bit. There'll, there'll be um, like a button band down the front. So this, 
this is sort of what it looks like but then also it's kind of all right I don't know I feel like I'm having such like decision fatigue here and like I don't want to cast on something else just for the point of like avoiding this because I actually really am I'm enjoying like knitting on this the yarn is so nice but it's just like making this decision about the sleeve and I basically I've, I've just gotten to has it gone I've just gotten to the end of this ball that I'm using so I'm like do I keep knitting on the sleeve and see how much it decreases or do I knit on the body a bit longer to see if this sits too far down if I ripped back I guess there's kind of like a couple of options one I could just rip back the sleeve so I did German short rows up here um so you can kind of see where I've like turned the work I'm hoping that that will just sort of block out but because I did do this sort of armhole shaping just kind of straight and then out and then I picked up underneath because I wanted the body to be quite oversized but that's essentially why there's 15 extra stitches in the sleeves now. I think this would have honestly been perfect if I hadn't casted on more stitches like underneath the armholes but then I wanted them for the body so this is like now the issue that I'm having um, but yeah I could rip back to where the German short rows end because that was essentially like a flat cut off point I don't know how what you'd word it as but and then decrease at a quicker rate so I'm currently decreasing I think about every 10 rows which in measurements is like about every inch but because there are so many stitches it's not I feel like making too much of a drastic difference I don't know if you can kind of see you can sort there's kind of like a small change in tension at my beginning of like rows but Again, it's under the arm and I'm hoping it'll block out. Or the more drastic one would be to literally take out the whole sleeve, shorten this. So this is like, I guess what the, how big the armholes are. But then basically my biggest concern is that I'd be happy with it being this size, but I don't want to wash it and block it and then it gets even bigger. That's where the issues are coming because my gauge swatch didn't really grow unless I like I did two one of them were just literally wet blocks as well as it was and then the other one I like stretched out of it to see if I could um sort of knit less for, for more fabric but it just made it gappy so I'm thinking maybe it won't block hugely bigger but then I did do this with another jumper granted that was super wash but even though I washed and blocked the swatch, the jumper still got like significantly bigger. Um, I think because obviously when you have a whole piece, like the weight of it compared to the weight of your swatch is like way bigger. And it like the water weight and everything just sort of drags it down and like weighs everything out. But I don't know. I think, I think I need to take to the Instagram stories really to see but it doesn't look too bad um, as I'm going down. And I think as well, it doesn't help that the needles are like weighing it down at the bottom currently. So maybe it's kind of like that, which is all right. I'll update whatever I decide to do. <laughs> I came to a decision on my own. I've decided I'm gonna keep knitting on the sleeve, basically knit a whole sleeve and then decide if I wanna rip it back or not. And then if I'm not that happy, I'll knit the other one differently with more decreases and then try it on and see which one I like. But regardless, I did just want to show off some new yarn that I bought. And this is getting ridiculous now. I do need to stop buying more yarn. And it's silly because I wanted to buy the Isaya Aran Tweed in confetti. I was like, no, like, I'm not gonna buy it. Like it's expensive, like that's a big purchase. So instead of doing that, I went and bought, like spent more money on different yarn. So can't actually explain that one to you. But these were on sale on Wool Warehouse. And like, this was a big purchase for me. 
but I just literally saw this colour and was like in love with it and these were half price. Um, so these are the Rowan Island Blend Fine. So this is a like, I think this is like a fingering weight because um, they have a DK version as well but they don't have as many colours or at least in the wool warehouse sale they didn't have as many colours. Um, I was just like in love with this green. Um, so this is 70% wool, 15% alpaca and 15% silk and I basically want to hold this double so because quite a lot of the yarns that I've got recently and they're on like relatively not like small small needles but like 4, 4.5 um, and the other Rowan that I bought which was on sale in Hobbycraft recently which I think was in my last vlog um, the grey it's something yak like cotton yak or something but I literally just looked at that a minute ago and that's also four millimeters so that's also a DK and I, I do not want to knit this single so my plan is to hold this double so yeah I bought 12 um which might be overestimating because I typically am like really bad for overestimating yarn quantities but they because it was on sale, I thought it would sell quick. And also, I was going to buy them all of one dye lot. I think they had like 10 of one dye lot and 7 of another. And I didn't know how stark the difference in the dye lots were going to be. So I thought, since my plan is to hold it double, I'll buy 6 of one and 6 of the other. And then every like two strands that I hold, I'll hold from different dye lots so that it's consistent through the whole garment however saying that i can't okay right that was stupid of me literally as i've just said that i've been looking all over this little label for the dye lot and it's literally printed so you literally can't even work out what that says i think so tiny and so faded on the little thing on the back but regardless i can't actually really tell the difference between these dye lots anyway so these are two different dye lots and maybe this one's like the tiniest bit lighter but honestly honestly I think that's just me being really sort of like inspecting it but like you to to the eye like you can't really actually see the difference so yeah, that is basically the plan, is to just try and hold different dialogues at the same time. And I just want to make something in stocking out with this. Literally just like a really simple jumper. I think because the colour is, like, I just really like this colour. And I don't want to do much with the stitches because I, this cardigan that I'm making for only, this one... I want to do surface crochet then the other row and i got in the gray i want to do like some sort of textured stitch then the gray uh nord i've got i want to do cables and the other things i've got they've all got different stitch patterns that i really want to try out and i think this will be good just to have like a bit of a bigger needle just like plain stockinette piece to like just break up all of the other more time consuming things that i'm doing um something that's a bit more of like instant sort of satisfaction and like quicker finishing basically so yeah i love this but yeah this this did cost me just under 100 pound for these 12 hanks i get that's a lot but in my mind i'm like it should have been 200 though so you know but i've started caking i caked two skeins in case I got too frustrated with the cardigan I'm designing and I could just do a bit of a gauge swatch for that. I will just keep going on the sleeve. I'm not gonna keep rambling about it because the longer I ramble, the less in it. And you know, the longer it will just take me in total. I feel like you can hardly even see that this is getting smaller, but it actually does. And I actually measured as well. Sorry, last thing. So I was going off for measurements of some of my clothes, like store-bought clothes that I wear a lot. So not only knitwear, but like I had like a hoodie and stuff that I like the shoulder and whatnot. And basically I measured 
the armholes are typically about 10 inches from shoulder to like underarm and this literally measures up exactly 10 inches so my my calculations were very correct and this edge is now on about 8.5 so that actually is quite a significant difference i just don't think it looks like it i'll check back in at some point sorry this is getting really all over the place now but this is just like my actual thought process every time i design something so i keep trying it on i keep thinking it's too big and like this is where the decreases are so i'm trying to compare it to other pieces so this top is literally like the top of this sleeve is lined up exactly with this cardigan that i made recently which is in my last vlog um so this is just this is obviously a raglan so it is constructed differently but essentially if this was just kind of straight down here it would be the same um but i was basically trying because i really like the fit of this i really like these sleeves they're like a little bit oversized but they're not sort of too too big on me um and i kind of worked out that actually the armholes sit at like relatively very similar points this is slightly lower still but minimal amounts right it is the rate of decreasing that's throwing me off so if i just reline these back up so you can kind of see that's where the body is so although it's lower it does need to come in more so what i'm thinking is to maybe rip this back and instead of doing it every 10 do every five or six rows for decreasing um yeah sorry this might be a bit of like a better sort of comparison so you can kind of see that this gradually does get a bit smaller um and this one it is still like this is where it'd be if it was level it is still going in but i really was trying to avoid frogging but i think it's gonna be necessary yeah also excuse this this is where um i basically the end of the round was but yeah this is italian bind off as well so like it'll probably be quite similar apart from on this one i do two by two ribbing yeah this is too big this is for sure too big and i worked out as well like with this rate of decreasing where it will sit around my um wrist and it's too big so I've been doing calculations for basically how much smaller this will be on different rates of decrease I can do. Because I looked at doing it with five, like every five rows, that still seemed too big. And then I've also done every four and every three and I've put some hair grips in. So, you know, really professional, proper way of um, doing things. But I don't know how well you can kind of see on camera i hope this isn't sort of getting lost in my bookshelf but the bottom hair grip is how many less stitches i'll have with five then that's with four which actually isn't that much of a significant difference it's four in the whole round to like where i am currently but this is with three um if i decrease every three rows so at the minute it's every 10 so I'm thinking I might honestly frog back and go to every three, basically every three rows do a decrease, which seems so rapid, but I think it's just because this is a finer yarn, like you work with more stitches and so your like rates of things happen quicker. Anyway. So this is now what I'm currently deciding to do because I really don't want to have to go back and frog any part of the body because I have started knitting on like whole rounds now and I do actually like the fit of the body. That's the main thing. If I wasn't that asked about what the body was looking like, I would just frog back. But obviously when this is here, I actually do like the width of it. And so I don't want to have to take out the underarm stitches. Um because I like the measurement it gives but I think oh this has come out 
but um yeah i think we'll go we'll go down to every three i think that's gonna be a good rate of decrease which is fine because it will re-knit way quicker because i'm having to lit knit less stitches more frequently if that makes any sense r.i.p to this i love this yarn really honestly like love love this yarn like thanks so much to owning for sending me this this is maybe not the best angle but serves a purpose so after all of my back and forth thing earlier today about what to do with the sleeve i did frog it um back to basically the bottom of where i did the german short rows so i like essentially left this where it was flat and frogged back from there which was a bit of a nightmare because i put my like put my needles back in wrong like i put my lifeline back in wrong i had to like twist all my stitches back the right way and i had to sort of sort bits out but anyway i have now yeah basically re-knit nearly up to where i was before not quite but this is way better um so <laughs> you can see now that like this bit is getting smaller um it's still obviously like relatively wide i was worried it was going to become too small but i don't think that's a problem here <laughs> this angle's so bad um you can see the decreases way more rapidly so i actually went down to doing it every three rows um but yeah hopefully this is just going to taper off really nicely into the cuff and then if if this bit's a little bit thin i'll just block it apologies for the lighting it's like gone nine o'clock now in the evening but i just wanted to update where i've got to with this sleeve because i've decided i want to do quite a big um cuff on this so i think i'm going to stop decreasing where i am now but this is basically what it's looking like currently. Um, so I've completely re -knit everything I frogged plus some more rows. I knew it would be quicker to knit it this time than the first time because obviously working with less stitches because I'm decreasing more. My hands are cramping if I'm being honest but I'm just like I feel like I'm on a roll with it you know. So yeah if I sort of hold this where it will actually sit. It's kind of difficult because obviously I didn't finish the body but these points will sort of be like here with the ribbing but this might go up a bit because of the neckline so this is currently here so it's like mid forearm it's like defo past my elbow my elbow is like here um but obviously sleeves get longer with blocking anyway and this is sort of all tucking in on itself that will flatten out so plus the chunky cuff that i want to do i think this might work um might just have to block like a little bit longer but as with most sleeves i guess it kind of be similar let me get it out and show you so this is my drops alpaca jumper conveniently in my drawer right here <laughs> but this one i did relatively chunky cuffs on as well um they're not like super long so i'm thinking i didn't actually do any sleeve decreases for this either these are wide sleeves so it is a bit different but i do want to do two by two ribbon for this i do just have like a real love for two by two ribbon i just really love the way that it looks um so this jumper i started doing one by one also i never used to decrease my needle sizes for ribs so that's why it doesn't look so sort of tight but yeah cast it on did one by one and then on the sleeves and on the body i did two by two could not tell you why now i still wear this a lot like it doesn't bother me enough to like frog it but i yeah i do just really like the look of two by two and i think it will look really nice um sort of as a cardigan obviously having a big neck and then it's gonna have like the big sort of um embroidered design over the top so i just want the cardigan to feel quite like i don't know more more like a jacket than a cardigan i guess but yes this is sort of what i'm going to be going for but it'll be longer and because the sleeve has shaping you can imagine this at an angle yeah anyway 
we'll let you know when it's done this is a really scatty update like literally five minutes before i'm about to get ready for bed so i'm in my pjs and this makeup needs to come off however i just wanted to show where i was up to with this i can't even remember where i was at in the last clip however i have made progress on the body which is hard to see because i have a huge oversized t-shirt on um, but yeah also managed to do a whole sleeve and i feel like this looks a bit weird um being so sort of into the cuff um that is a bad explanation hopefully you can see visually but what i'm hoping is i can block this quite wide so it'll kind of be like i don't know but also longer my thought is i'm worried it's going to grow with blocking so i'm going to knit the body do all this and then see that with the sleeve maybe knit the other one the same and then block it and see how much i can actually stretch because if i was to frog this and re-knit it again that would be the third time <laughs> so that feels like a commitment that i don't want to commit to right now but oh this fabric i will get a better clip when it's not looking like this with lighting and stuff but this is so nice like i really feel like my tension's quite consistent you can definitely see like slight discrepancies but i feel like blocking is gonna fix that but yeah we'll see if this makes the cut sorry this is a little bit all over the place but so it's Sunday morning now. Well, actually, I think it's Sunday early afternoon, but um, I am going to finish up this video here because I'm trying to keep these as like sort of two week, I guess, like making vlogs. But I just thought I could quickly um, like run through where I'm at with everything before I start the next one. So I guess this is the main event of this video. I think the last clip that I filmed of this was pretty poorly filmed, so apologies. But I am up to the body ribbing on this cardigan. Um, this is the only one. So I have literally just need to keep going with this ribbing and then bind off. And then I'm going to do this front and neck section and this is what the sleeve looks like although I am half tempted to redo this sleeve for a third time I'm gonna do like all of this section and then we'll see I feel like maybe at first I didn't have enough decreases and now I feel like I have too many decreases is the issue so we'll see we'll see on this one because i'm like maybe it could block out um maybe it couldn't also where i've decreased so frequently there is this like it almost looks like a raglan kind of line you know and they're like here um but i honestly don't mind that because it's quite uniform the only reason there's this sort of line here is because that's the like beginning and end of row but i feel like that would like level out with the blocking anyway but I just don't know how much I can like feasibly actually stretch this. So the other whip that I've been making progress on is actually um, this pair of gloves or like fingerless gloves, which is a pattern by Petite Knit. I think it's the penny glove. So I think I might've said my boyfriend asked me to make these for one of his relatives. Um, so this is the current state of the first one. I'm just knitting on the second one. I haven't done the thumb section, so that's why these stitches are on hold. It's just in this really nice, um, like dark kind of green color. This is, um, it is the one of the recommended yarns. It's the Filicolana Alva, I would like to say, held double. Um, I'm in the UK, I ordered this from Knit 
which is just knit with two t's um the website so this is where i'm at with number one and number two which is pretty tangled because i took it in my handbag with me to london yesterday to knit on the train i've pretty much got up to um here with it so i've got about three weeks i think before i need to finish these but i I am meant to be making a second pair so I'm gonna basically knit all of this and then do both the thumbs in like one go because I don't know why this is just the way that I've done it but um yeah so that's pretty much the progress I've made in the last two weeks on these things um this the cardigans definitely taken me longer than things normally do because I'm using smaller needles than I ever normally do and smaller yarn but the yarn is so nice like I actually cannot stress enough it's like literally the softest thing ever um also just been like a bit busy but that's whatever so I'm literally about to start filming for another video um now so gonna round this up but thank you so much for watching as always if you stayed until the end um hoping to get some more vlogs up and I actually want to make some like sew along sort of videos so that's kind of what I want to start in, the, in a minute fingers crossed sort of all goes well but yeah you can find me on Instagram um at fashion by Beth and my nails Instagram as well which I'll like leave down below but yeah thanks so much for watching and if you want to see more don't forget to like subscribe and like all that stuff Bye.